Norwegian ski jumper Danielle Andre Tande was involved in a pretty massive crash and remains hospitalized with what thankfully appear to be non-life-threatening injuries. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. In this video, we'll talk about what we can learn from traumatic injuries in sport like this and then kind of walk through the whole sequence of what happened here. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique side of sports, please consider subscribing and hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy this video and let's get started. As we look through this jump, things seem to start just fine as he first takes off here, but then as he gets into the air, we can see that left ski starts to go out a little bit on him and he kind of loses some control. Now it's important to know he is an elite level ski jumper. He's an Olympic champion and even competes in something called ski flying, which is basically ski jump on steroids and more dangerous. So you have to be really skilled to compete at that level. But once you lose control of a ski like that, it's really hard to recover. And of course he understands that and basically decides to just bail on it. Now, this is really important because what we can see him do here as he knows he's coming down to the ground is he basically prepares himself for this landing and really could have saved much more severe injuries from happening. As he comes down here, you can see he brings his arms up. It looks like he's trying to turn to the side a little bit so that he doesn't land directly face down. And he brings his arms up to kind of protect them because you don't want to fall with your arms outstretched because then you worry about all kinds of major injuries to the arms. And so he's really smart here to be aware that this is going to happen. And this is just a testament to his elite level to prepare for this level of a fall by bringing those arms up. Now, of course, as he comes through, he still is going to have a massive injury to the head as that head slams into the snow and then of course continues to tumble down the hill. We haven't gotten word yet of things like knee ligament injuries, but as he's coming down here again, the fact that he's able to kind of bring his legs together when he falls and his skis kind of pop off right away, at least decreases the chance of having a big major ligament injury to the lower extremities. Now, as we heard, he was unconscious and had to be intubated before even going to the hospital. And we can see the result of that here in this image. We'll talk about that more in a second, but you can see how there's basically an artificial breathing tube here that looks to already be in place to help support his breathing. As we look from this back view, we can of course see that left ski is out of control. And then as he gets ready to land, he realizes that he's gonna crash, brings those arms up to protect himself so that as he falls, he's not landing on that outstretched arm. But then of course, as he comes down, we're gonna see that head slam into the snow, which is when he's gonna suffer that brain injury. The reports so far indicate he has no life-threatening injuries, but does still remain in a medically induced coma as he continues to recover. When we see pictures like this from him coming down the hill, it certainly makes us worry about a cervical spine injury, but these were really from when he was more tumbling down the hill. This again goes back to how smart he was to kind of protect himself when he lands here because that initial impact is not directly axial onto the top of his head, twisting his neck like we see later on. If this initial impact when he first landed had been more head first, then we certainly would be worried about a bad neck injury. But again, his foresight here to be able to protect himself and fall in at least the kind of least damaging way, I think really was fortunate here for this case. Anytime we see positions like this though, involving the neck, we still have to be concerned about those cervical spine injuries. And especially if somebody is unconscious, it's hard to test and see if there is any damage to the nerves that could cause paralysis. As we heard, he was intubated and put on a ventilator before even getting to the hospital. There's a scoring tool we use called the Glasgow Coma Scale that basically gives us an objective kind of number for how severe somebody's brain injury is. It's a three-part score that consists of eye-opening response, verbal response, and motor response, and it's a quick way for the doctors or the EMS team to get a really quick assessment of how severe an injury is. There's kind of a guideline in trauma care that if someone has a score of eight or less, that indicates that they have bad enough brain injury that their respiratory or breathing function could be compromised and you need to put a breathing tube down their throat and help support their breathing. So this probably means that when the team got out there to the slopes, they did their quick GCS assessment, realized that he was pretty severely injured and needed to be intubated right there on the scene. Now, the other injuries we have heard about are a broken collarbone and a punctured lung. So let's look at our biodigital anatomy tool to talk about those. Your collarbone is also known as your clavicle, and it's pretty easy to feel yourself. It's this kind of hard bone that runs from your sternum out to your shoulder. Collarbone fractures are pretty common in sports, and it makes total sense for how this happened based on the way that he fell. Any sort of load coming into the side of the shoulder pushing on this collarbone can predispose that collarbone to getting fractured. If we look from the top down, imagine the ground coming in this way as he lands, making contact right into the side of that bone, causing it to fracture. So right here on this initial landing, when he's got those arms tucked up, 
all that load from the snow and the hill is going directly into the side of his shoulder, which is probably when the clavicle fracture occurred. The clavicle fracture and the partially collapsed lung really are not that serious in and of themselves, so it sounds reassuring so far that at least we haven't heard about any major bone fractures or bony trauma. Of course, when you first get to a trauma center, they're not looking for things like ACL tears and ligament injuries, and so that's all gonna be done after the fact, after he's out of his medically induced coma, after the breathing tube is out, and they have a better chance to fully evaluate the extent of the injuries. It's also reassuring to hear that they're basically keeping him in this medically induced coma by choice to allow his brain and body to start to heal. Like I said, I think the fact that he was able to recognize the fall and bring his arms up, set himself up for at least as minimal injuries as possible, and it's great to hear that so far things appear non-life-threatening. That's it for the video. I hope this was educational and you were able to learn something from this. Let me know any questions or comments down below, and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Thank you.